So 2020 has been a pretty interesting year. And regarding to gaming, we got um, chess. Okay, so we did actually get quite a handful of quality titles this year, despite the current global circumstances. And there's a lot of games I'm looking forward to coming later this year as well. I just haven't had that much time to play that many video games this year. It's sad, I know. However, Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics, that's a mouthful, is honestly one of my favorite games of 2020 so far. I've always enjoyed playing board, card, and tabletop games with friends and family, such as chess, checkers, blackjack, and Texas Hold'em. But if you also include a variant of Uno, Yahtzee, Connect 4, and Mastermind, that just sounds like a wonderful package. Not to mention all the foreign games that I never knew prior to playing Clubhouse. And I gotta say, I absolutely love Mancala. The visual presentation is phenomenal, and Clubhouse does a pretty good job teaching players on how to play each and every game included in the package. So is what basically a minigame collection worth picking up? Well, let's go over it. So there isn't much in-depth information or research with this title than my usual content, but Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics was revealed in a mini Nintendo Direct on March 26, 2020 and was released a few months later on June 5th. Clubhouse was developed by ND Cube, who developed the recent Mario and Wii Party titles. The game was developed by Asushi Nako and was produced by Toshiaki Suzuki, Toyokazu Nodaka, Takashi Tezuka, and Katsuya Aguchi. Clubhouse Games 51 is actually a sequel to the 2006 Clubhouse Games for the Nintendo DS. This included 42 games, however a handful of these weren't actually in this collection. And hey, if Nintendo can revive a dead IP that we didn't even know was dead in the first place, there's still hope for our boy Captain Falcon just yet. Development on some of the games within this collection can be dated all the way back to the Wii U and even Wii days. Some mini games, such as toy curling and boxing were actually reworked from Wii Party U. In the Wii U's E3 reveal trailer, there's a scene where two players are playing Renegade, with one of them flipping the table. This was utilized in Clubhouse's handheld mode. Six Ball Puzzle is a reskin of the media game Castle Clearout for Mario Party 9, and Nine Holes in Golf are actually the same holes in Wii Sports, which can actually be traced all the way back to the NES Golf. On July 7th, Nintendo announced the statistics for the most popular games within the collection. These are broken up by category, but the top three most popular games by cumulative playtime around the world goes to Mahjong, Yacht Dice, and Hanafuda cards. And the top three most played games worldwide is Six Ball Puzzle, Mancala, and Four in a Row. While the game has an E rating here in the United States, the South Korean version of Clubhouse got that slap of the old mature 18 plus rating on this title, and Australia got the rating of 15 plus. This was due to the casino-themed games, which I wish there was more of, personally. Clubhouse received overall positive reception, with praise on its presentation, collection of games, tough AI, and single-player and online features. Most of the complaints from this collection comes from the 3-4 to four multiplayer options. At the time of this video, there's no record on how much Clubhouse has sold globally, but during its first week, it was in the top 10 and sold over 64,443 copies within Japan alone just behind Animal Crossing New Horizons. So there's a lot to cover here, and I won't be breaking down every single game mechanic within this bundle. The category of these games can be broken down to as such, board games, card games, toy and sport games, variety, single player, and the bonus piano mode. Clubhouse does a very good job of teaching the player and how the basics of each of these games are played with these little video tutorials. However, they do offer a more in-depth rule set, as well as providing tips to the player. Which is good, but that doesn't mean that the AI will not completely destroy you every single time you play Nine Men's Morris, and it doesn't matter how many times you play it or how many times you get better at it, because it will always destroy you. I hate this game! Mill. Sorry, I lost my cool. As a multiplayer experience, this game is phenomenal. And an unfortunate misfire. So you have the option to play with others on the same Switch, local play, and online. Starting with the same Switch, any card game such as Last Card or Sevens that require you to have a hand at play is disabled. Which makes sense. Also, if you're not using a single Joy-Con, bowling and darts is off the table too. Most of the games are available to you, but if you have three players, your selection is cut down to just Chinese Checkers, Ludo, and Blackjack. But why couldn't Yacht Dice, Bowling, Darts, Shooting Gallery, and Battle Tanks be added? Come on, Nintendo. Bump up the four players and all you got is Ludo and Blackjack. While I haven't had any issues with it, because I play with respectable individuals, I kinda wish the undo button was an option you can toggle off. I can imagine people abusing the hell out of this thing. Now, local multiplayer on different Switches on the other hand is executed extremely well. 
So playing it this way, all the card games are included, though fishing, slot cars, and team tanks are restricted to mosaic mode. However, Nintendo added the Clubhouse Guest Pass app on the Switch's eShop for free. This makes it so only one player needs to own the game to play all the titles. Plus, the app also comes with free Connect 4, Dominoes, President, and slot cars, which in itself is pretty great. It's free real estate. If you and a friend both own the title, you can also play the games together online as well. Oh, and um, you can also talk to your friend using that Switch app, or you know, you can just Discord or call them. If it's just you and a friend, sibling, partner, or turtle that you just happen to find, there's still a lot of games and content to enjoy here. If you're playing with three to four people or a larger group, you're best on taking turns between each game. The party genre is my absolute favorite, and I love having a group of friends together. However, I don't think Clubhouse would be the ideal game to break out for that kind of occasion. Now, single player experience on the other hand, let me tell you, this game is actually really great. And that's a really weird thing to say for a party game, but hear me out. So due to a certain outbreak going around the world right now and not being able to see my friends and family as much, I am self-confined to my den a lot. And this game is perfect to casually pick up and play and relax for either 15 minutes or two hours straight. Opening Clubhouse for the first time will ask you which piece you want to represent you and where you're from. Now, I live in the forest, but according to Clubhouse, I live in the middle of the ocean. You're also prompt on what your favorite games and foods are, as well as your greatest dream in life. Now, I'm a simple fox that lives a simple life, so clearly I just want the modest dream of world domination. Using this globe can let you view other players' stats and tastes in games, but... There's, there's really not much use of this mode, to be honest. So there's two factors to playing single player, offline and online. So spending my time offline, it gives me the opportunity to actually learn how a handful of these games are played on my own time. It took me like 50 plus rounds to finally understand how the heck I'm supposed to play Hare and Hounds, and it's now one of my favorites. While the game does a pretty good job of explaining the rules to all these games, some games such as Hanafuda and Richie Mojan required me to look up YouTube tutorials to further explain the rules to me. The game also rewards little achievements and medals of mastery, most of which are just beating the AI on harder difficulties. The AI can be merciless on impossible difficulty on certain games. And I just want to ask, has anyone actually beat Chess or Shogi on impossible difficulty? Please let me know. The game also offers facts and trivia on each game when you play them 2-5 to five times, which is a nice little touch, I like that. While I'm not into the sliding puzzle minigame, I do enjoy Solitaire a lot. Which, here's a little trivia for you. In French, Solitaire means lonely. Je suis triste maintenant. Playing online with anyone is a pretty nice relaxing way to spend the evening. This might just be like a me specific thing here, but when I was younger, I used to spend hours of my time playing chess and checkers online with people. Back in the old Windows 98 and XP days. As well as playing old flash games of blackjack and poker. Being able to replay all those just hits this sense of nostalgia for me. Not to mention that there's now 40 other games that I can play with others online. When playing with others, you can select out the three games that you want to play, and it will try to find your opponent. It'll also tell you what games already have someone waiting if you want to jump into a game as soon as possible. The online works really well too. I only had a few instances where I had to deal with lag, but most of the times where I'm waiting, it's just for my opponent to make their next move. That isn't to say they won't rage quit on you when you best them in a game of chess and won't accept defeat. Come on, Cray, you coward! My only two grievances that I have with the online play is that you and your opponent can see each move you both make. Which for games like Mancala, when you have to discreetly take all of your opponent's seeds without them knowing, you have to count it up in your head and refrain from double checking. And while this isn't really important, I just wish there was a little chat with like some pre-generated phrases. I just want to tell my opponent's good game, because sportsmanship is fun. The game selection overall is really great. I do wish there was more casino based games besides just Blackjack and Texas Hold'em. A slots and a roulette table would have been awesome. Battleship, which was in the DS game, would have also been a pretty fantastic inclusion. While I do intend to make some top 5 and top 10 videos sometime in the future, here's a rapid fire of the Fox's list of all 51 games, excluding Piano. So at the bottom I'm putting Rishi Mahjong. I think my opinion on this one will change in the future as I better understand it, but unlike the other games in this collection, Mahjong is the most complex one of the bunch, resulting in hours of YouTube tutorials to understand. Team Tanks It's fun to play at first, however, unlike the Tanks minigame and Wii Play that had 100 levels, this one only has 3. Comparison to Wii Play is going to be a common trend in this video. Sliding Puzzle I've just never been a fan of sliding puzzles, and you add pressure at time, it's just... No, please. Ludo. This one kind of makes me sad to put so low. Sorry is one of my favorite board games ever, but Ludo just goes 
on forever. Matching. Nothing really wrong with it. It's just not as exciting. Battle tanks. Overall, it's okay. Basically, it's just Shell Shock from Super Mario Party or Mario Party 2. But I wish you could strife left and right to add some depth to the gameplay. Spider Solitaire. When playing the other Solitaires, I feel much more relaxed on putting my cards away. Having new cards block my stack of cards and rearranging everything is nerve-wracking to my inner neat freak. Dominoes. This one is just meh, to me honestly. It's, it's more fun to just knock Dominoes over than to actually play it. Toy Soccer. I can never hit the ball in the right direction with this. Toy Tennis. Two decades of Mario Tennis prepared me for this one. Toy Baseball. Baseball is my favorite sport. I do like the psychological warfare of pretending to throw the ball. Can you imagine if real baseball was like this? Nine Men's Morris. I don't know, it's because I played this one so many times against CPU and just trying to get good enough at the game, but once the player gets mill, it's basically a slaughter show. War. What is it good for? Absolutely not. It's all about luck, really. That's it. Takoyaki. Mostly just luck again, though the Joker can alter your chances a bit. Speed. I'm just bad at acting quickly. Shooting gallery. I just feel that the Wii Play one had more to offer. Like, where's the can? I miss it. Gamoku. This one falls under the I'm just so freaking bad at it, so therefore I don't enjoy it category. Basically, Connect 5. It's fine. I just... I can't win. President. This one's more fun, I think, playing physically with friends. Because in this one, really, it's just like only the fifth round counts. Golf. Not as engaging as the Wii Sports one, but it's simple to understand and it plays as it should. Solid golf in the game. Six ball puzzle. With the exception of Tetris, I'm not really good at these kind of like puzzle games, but it's still fun in short bursts. The music is lit though. Fishing. It's simple to play. I get Mario Party Castaway vibes when reeling the fish in by spinning the joystick. It's also pretty zen and relaxing. Karnan. This one's pretty unique. It's kind of like billiards, but with token pieces. Hex. Get from one line to the other and trying to block your opponent. The shift from playing offensively and defensively can happen at any moment. Renegade. Also known as Reversi or Othello. Just when you think you're winning, you lost. I love it though. Chinese Checkers. I finally figured out how to play this silly game. And it's fun. I like strategizing all of my jumps. Checkers. Baby's first chess. Backgammon. Just like Chinese Checkers, I never knew how this game was played until I got Clubhouse. And it's just like a better and quicker version of Ludo. Bringing all the boys home. Toy Boxing. Beat up your buds. Air Hockey. 1% skill. 99% <laughs> Billiards. It's just Billiards with three different game options. I do kind of miss the perspective that the Wii Play one had, but it's still a good time. Slot Cars. This one plays exactly like Slot Car Derby from the first two Mario Parties, which is great. Though I am disappointed you can't play this one online. Pig's Tale. This one's another one of those luck-based card games. However, it is quite hilarious to see your opponent draw the same suit and take the whole deck. Darts. So this one's pretty fun and chill. I like the atmosphere and the physics. However, my only issue is that by default it uses the right Joy-Con without the option to switch for the left. And I'm left pawed, so holding the right Joy-Con in my left paw or trying to do it with the right, it just, it doesn't feel natural. Bowling. Same problem I have with darts. However, I do like that the bowling feels more faster than its Wii counterpart, but I do miss throwing the ball backwards and seeing all the Miis jump around. Hit and blow. I used to play Mastermind a lot as a kid, and it was fun to pick this back up again. I just wish there was an option where, like, you can pick the pieces and let a friend guess them. I don't know. It's still fun, though. Hare and Hounds. This one took me over 50 games to finally figure out, but I like how quick these rounds go and each decision counts. Dot and Boxes. I used to play this with my siblings a lot when we were bored. The main strategy is just wait for your opponent to make the third line within the box. Mahjong Solitaire. I've always wondered how this was played and after figuring out it's very therapeutic. Klondike Solitaire. Also very therapeutic. I wish younger me would have known how to play this on my dad's old Windows 98 computer instead of just watching the king wink all the time. Sevens. When I play, I just like to be evil and holding the cards that the other players will need. Hanafuda. 130 years of making them, my inner Nintendo nerd is now satisfied to know how to play this game. This is one that had a bit of a learning curve that required a few YouTube tutorials. But once you get past that, it's a lot of fun. It's kind of like poker, but trying to collect sets of cards and preventing your opponent from getting them. Shogi. My inner weeb was also pretty happy to know how this game was played. It's just like chess, but a lot more complex. Taking over your opponent's pieces and using them against them is pretty satisfying. Mini Shogi. Same game, quicker rounds, still use the same amount of brain power though. Chess. Ah yes, the game of games. I used to be really good at chess back in the day, and then I got awful. However, replaying it here inspired me to look up strategies to get better at it on YouTube, so 
I shall reclaim my throne soon enough and outwit all of my friends. Blackjack. Blackjack is just one of my favorite card and casino games. It's just good to casually kick back and play it without having to worry about losing your mortgage. Toy Curly. I like using my spare pucks to just block my opponent's opening and taking the ring for myself. Last card, the game of ruined friendships. Is there anything else that needs to be said here? Four in a row. Connect four, but without having to give any money to Hasbro or Milton Bradley. Texas Hold'em. I can just spend hours casually kicking back and playing round after round of this. Letting the bets rise when knowing damn well you have a bad hand. I'm going home rich or in a body bag. Yacht Dice. I used to play Yahtzee a lot when I was younger, and I used to have this Yahtzee PC game from like those Kellogg cereals. Do you guys remember those? Anyway, Yacht Dice is a good way to just relax and spend like 10 minutes. And my favorite game of all in this collection just has to go to Mancala. It's short and quick, but it's very addicting. Capturing a good chunk of my opponent's SEEDS is the- <laughs> It's an adrenaline- This- <laughs> It's an adrenaline- <laughs> Collecting my opponent's seeds is an adrenaline rush. There's just a lot of strategy that goes into Mancala that makes it very worthwhile to play. And again, majority of these games are all fantastic, and you can't really go wrong with any of them. Some definitely require a learning curve, but once you and your opponent or friend gets past it, it could definitely be pretty enjoyable. It's interesting, while I was building this list, I was looking at other people's tier lists for the collection, and a lot of them had vastly different results from one another. Some favorite games that I wasn't particularly too fond of, and it's always awesome to see a variety of tastes and opinions from others. Play the games that you love and do what makes you happy, people. Visually, this game just looks gorgeous. All the boards and card pieces just have this realistic sense of texture to them. The toy pieces, for example, look like they're made of actual plastic. The unlockable Mario-themed playing cards is also a really nice touch, and I do like that they actually used the 2006 Club Nintendo Hanafuda cards as well. Though they missed out on not using the Mario-themed chess. You know the one. Where Luigi's the queen. The variety of boards, styles, backgrounds, and colors makes each game feel unique and distinct from one another. The UI is also incredibly well organized and never felt cumbersome. I like that you can view each game one at a time while viewing the rules, or being able to view them all at once. I don't know if it's the presentation, the fonts, or perhaps just the audio and sound effects, but I do get some serious ND Cubes Mario Party and Wii Party vibes from it. Whether that's a good or a bad thing, that's completely up to you, but there is a real sense of polish with this game. The video tutorials are pretty helpful, and while I did like the quirkiness to them at first, they do get old super quickly. And they're annoying. And they happen every single time you select the game. Why? The music is mostly casual, relaxing, thought-provoking, and it can even be bouncy. Favorite track has to go to four in a row and sliding puzzle. I get this weird blend of like Pixar shorts and like Spongebob ukulele. It just has this sense of fun to it. I just also adore the Texas Hold'em and Blackjack casual casino atmosphere. The only track I really just wasn't a fan of was Chess. The music itself is pretty quiet and it doesn't keep the player distracted, but it just feels empty compared to the rest of the collection. The game's music was composed by Chami Ishii and Toshiki Aida. Another thing that keeps this game feeling really polished is its usage of sound effects. Each piece pickup, card flip, and toy collision just feels super natural and realistic. So, should you pick up Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics? Well, I think it depends on what you expect to get out of it. I would recommend this game if 1. If you're a fan of classic games such as Chess and Checkers and you don't own a physical version of it, or you want a convenient package of them all digitally. 2. If you want to learn foreign board games or simply brag about knowing how to play them. 3. As a casual game to kick back and relax and play for 20 minutes after a long day of work. And 4. Like all party games, having a good friend to play these games with you. I would advise against this game if you're expecting to break this out during family and friend game nights, since most of the options this package provides is only restricted to two players. I'd also suggest against this game if you don't have A. Someone to play this with, and B. A Nintendo Switch Online membership. However, Clubhouse retails for only $39.99 and includes 51 games. That's about 78 cents per game basically. I am someone who enjoys playing physical board games with friends, but not being able to see people with the current circumstances or having friends that live far away, the convenience of having it all digitally and, to quote the back of the box, all of the games, none of the setup, makes this a viable option to play with friends and family. Clubhouse Games 51 Worldwide Classics has its guest pass for free in the Nintendo eShop and I would encourage you to check it out. I'm sure Hasbro isn't pleased with Nintendo offering Connect 4 for free, so go get it. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. This was a lot of fun, but certainly a lot of work to put together. 
I certainly spent like the last two weeks on this project. What did you think about Clubhouse? Have you played it? And if so, what was your favorite game in the collection? I'd love to hear your comments about the game or my video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving me a like and subscribing for more videos from me in the future. I also have some other videos that I have made that are, you know, they're good. I put a lot of heart into them. Uh, I hope my audio sounds better. I got a new microphone and I've been waiting for weeks for it to come in, but uh, I'm still figuring things out with it, but it's good. Anyway, uh, thank you again for watching, friend. I hope you stay safe out there. And I'm going to go play some Mancala and go ruin someone's day right now. But I hope you have a great one. Till next time.